My name is Joseph Wonderich. I'm a professor of engineering, architecture, and computer science. I'm going to go through this very quickly. This uh, talk, this lecture is meant to be uh, two parts so over two hours. Um, it's gone slowly, but I'm going to go very quickly so it's condensed. And then uh, if students looking at this, please come back, look at the PowerPoints uh, one at a time, uh, click on the links, and take your time going through it. Um, I've been in uh, architecture all my life. I was born in 1961. Uh, did it full time until 19, uh, until uh, I was approximately 30 years old, and then um, <clears throat> I've done many other things since then. A lot of high tech. So the Roman Empire is uh, is very old, uh, from uh, 753 BC to 476 AD. It was a kingdom, and then a republic, and then an empire, and spread all over. Uh, Roman concrete is a, a big contribution, concrete, uh, and their concrete was uh, mixed uh, such that it lasted 2,000 years, uh, and uh, buildings, bridges, and roads, sewers, aqueducts, piers, and breakwaters. And uh, students take a time, go in and look at my lecture on concrete. So you see links below. The arch. Uh, they didn't uh, invent the arch, but they certainly mastered it. S distributes the load very nicely. You can see structural analysis here uh, compared to a lintel, which is straight across the top. Uh, the arch distributes the load much more efficiently. Uh, Roman sewers, uh, very early on, uh, more than 2,500 years ago, they carried both sewage and Stormwater runoff. That's what it looked like. The toilets. Uh, that's a picture I took in 2011. Shows the stormwater system is still working. Uh, previously, they dumped the raw sewage into the Tiber River uh, in Roman times. Not now. Uh, this uh, sewage system, or this uh, these sewers, uh, the Cloaca Maxima, allowed for the uh, draining of swampland and therefore the creation of uh, the, the forum, the main city center, uh, uh, ancient city center, <clears throat> and allowed unifying of the tribes uh, into one culture over 2,500 years ago. Uh, Appian Way, this is an important road that says uh, it's been said that all roads lead to Rome, and uh, the Romans had 53,000 miles of road. Uh, different construction methods students come back take a look at here. Uh, if you're more interested in this particular thing, drill down. Uh, there's a second road type. Well engineered. Uh, there were soldiers as well as builders uh, that would uh, travel and build. And then they had the chief builders, the architecti. And surveyors, and levelers, and then uh, construction workers. <clears throat> uh, prisoners, of war, slaves, uh, and they, every, everybody they captured, they'd make the people their slaves, every place they conquered. They were not a, a peaceful group. They went and expanded all over Europe and, and northern Africa and the Middle East and enslaved everybody that uh, they could. Mile markers. It's a picture of a bridge I took that's 2,200 years old. It uh, uh, means broken bridge, uh, Ponte Roto. Another bridge. Another bridge. Roads everywhere. You can see how far they expanded. And that allowed them to uh, to move their troops and to, to colonize in not so peaceful ways. Uh, so the Romans, I won't read all this here, but there have, were way stations uh, and uh, the, the legions, Roman legions of soldier architect builders didn't need them, but everybody else did. You needed passports. Uh, and then it led to... Uh, military camps growing up around them and uh, refreshments, uh, kind of little towns around each way station. Here's a picture of way station. 
A uh, little story here, I'll give it brief and I could tell it in long form later on, but uh, so I uh, was uh, on one of my trips to Europe, I was flying, flew into Zurich, I was teaching a PhD course at the University of Trento, uh, I drove over the Alps, took 10 hours, um, uh, and then on the way back I was using the uh, auto Strada, uh, it's like the Autobahn in Germany, and uh, I just stopped one place randomly. Uh, it was in Blue Dens, Austria, right about here. Uh, right where the Centurions uh, used to train in this kind of pocket here, protected pocket. Uh, there's a spa here and so um, long story short here I, uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool to go to a spa. Uh, I had several different experiences there uh, including unfortunately getting a kidney stone and ending up in luckily there's a hospital there uh, but looking out over the Alps lit up at night, uh, uh, healing from a kidney stone. I also was just off of crutches because I was healing from a sports injury that I went uh, and taught with crutches. I <clears throat> uh, just had surgery and six weeks before and a full ruptured Achilles tendon, a sports injury. Uh, so uh, quite a bit of storytelling I could tell here more in depth. So aqueducts, uh, they, uh, you know, as well as getting access all over the place, once they colonize, they need to get water. And it's, uh, uh, this is one of the earliest ones. There's another aqueduct. Uh, engineers may want to look into some of the, uh, the, the engineering here and the fluid mechanics of how it works, uh, including the, uh, the siphoning uh, type aqueduct which you can do underground and, and generally if it's above ground and you, the big things you see built are gravity fed you know this has to constantly slope from wherever the source is but uh, you can see how the siphon is used here and then uh, bridges and arches to, uh, we already spoke about uh, underground channels uh, list of quite a few uh, over, over 100 aqueducts you can see on this website, it's a research project in itself. Water mills, uh, they used um, uh, water to, uh, to, to manufacture well, food. And uh, this is actually a history of water mills here dating back before the Roman times. It's an ancient device. Uh, water mills, um, I, I, I'm actually Joseph the third, my son's the fourth. Joseph the first came from Germany and worked on water mills in the United States. Just kind of a side note, not in Roman times, in the uh, 1800s <clears throat> in Germany. You can see the mechanical motion translated into uh, workable, usable energy for creating food. Here's a nice model of uh, this, this flower factory could feed 12,000 people per day. I imagine you're colonizing, you know, you're, this, this is the imperial, uh, you know, imperialism. Um, you go and you conquer and enslave everybody, but you feed them, take care of your citizens, but not everybody else so well. Uh, not an ideal uh, humanitarian society, but engineering wise, it was, certainly extremely advanced and architectural wise quite a bit of contributions again flour mill uh, they were brutal in some of their entertainment methods in the Colosseum for example there's me in 2011 one of my trips one of the Colosseum a uh, great feat of engineering amazing feat of engineering they could actually flood the thing and have sea battles. Very innovative uh, invention here of elevators. Now it's powered by slaves, which is not good, but uh, the actual engineering is uh, pretty sophisticated for 2000 years ago of raising um, heavy animals up uh, into the arena floor. Uh, so again, you want to come back and take a look in a lot of the details here. I'm flying, fly, fly, flying through a two-hour talk here, probably, and I'm not sure how fast it'll get done. But very quickly, 
you want to, uh, and uh, these are whole lectures and other courses. So solar heating, passive solar heating versus active uh, natural daylighting. Uh, this is you know, 2,000 years ago. Uh, they're using the greenhouse effect. Uh, actually, uh, you'll see a greenhouse here in a minute. And then they invented glass. So they had sun right laws. It was a civil offense to block one's access to the south, right? The southern exposure, the northern hemisphere, the sun tracks across the sky from uh, you know, east to west, <clears throat> different altitudes, different trajectories, different times of year. But in general, southern exposure is where uh, the light comes from. Um, <clears throat> emphasize proper solar orientation. So they're, they're doing this early on. Now here is a greenhouse um, for Emperor Tiberius. And he wanted cucumbers out of season. So of course he orders it done. Um, <clears throat> and these are cisterns collecting rainwater. And then soon after, uh, glass is made, the first cast glass. So uh, about uh, this time in Roman history, the second century, the uh, AD, uh, there's cities everywhere. And you can see uh, uh, not just roads leading everywhere, but actual cities. This is a whole civilization, an empire. And very sophisticated uh, towns and town planning, uh, building. Uh, this is Trajan's Forum, rebuilt next to the original Forum. We um, saw on a previous slide, and this is a whole study in itself, case study in itself of architecture and engineering, particularly the architecture. And I saw this in Rome. This is still standing here. This is Trajan's Market, a large shopping mall, chiseled into the into the rock bed. Uh, pretty amazing for the time period. This is a shopping mall, almost two thousand years ago. Also amazing, two thousand years ago. This is one example of the uh, building. Uh, architectural excellence as well as engineering. This is the Pantheon, not to be confused with the Parthenon in Greece, that's a different thing on the Acropolis. This is Italy, the Pantheon in Rome. And uh, uh, we have a relationship with the Pantheon Institute that helped us make from Iron Elizabethtown College. Um, we'll talk more about that later. I plan to do other things with them. So the Pantheon, uh, uh, this is the present dirt level because there's essentially 10 feet of dust that accumulated in almost 2,000 years. Uh, the steps used to be 10 feet lower. It's an idea of the architectural concept and details. Concept here, fit a sphere inside. Other people would later do this quite a bit in neoclassical designs in the United States. Thomas Jefferson um, modeled after this, and Monticello's home, and other things. Uh, engineers can come back and take a look at this in detail. I'm not going to talk about it now, but the, uh, the way this works to distribute the load with uh, compression and tension, understand shell structures. Uh, distribution of loads. Again, uh, topic of uh, research in itself. Uh, the, the use of materials, the way they, uh, the, the, they, they tapered the shell. and uh, <clears throat> Also for natural daylighting. So it's a beautiful thing architecturally, mixing you know, the structural excellence as well as the natural lighting and cooling, if you can do both. So, uh, and the whole lecture here, you can go take a look at and pass in green architectural engineering. 
Uh, it's also a material methods course, I excerpt out of the green architecture engineering there. You can see a little bit, but uh, to see the details and really understand heating and cooling, both active and passive and man-made and artificial lighting, uh, and hopefully as much passive as possible, so it saves a lot of energy if you don't have a lot of machinery, uh, initial cost and to maintain and the complexity you know, of it all. Uh, be, keep it simple if you can and beautiful. So right around this time, the Roman Empire is now, uh, especially Emperor Hadrian, is mostly worried about just maintaining the civilization. Uh, the fall will Rome, the fall Rome will fall in uh, in a couple hundred years after this, um, from attacking uh, barbarian tribes all around, uh, well mainly from the north. Um, and so there's Hadrian's uh, Wall going all the way across to Britain. This is a, a rendering of it. Uh, so the empire, just trying to maintain now, at 200 AD, 1800 years ago. Uh, and then a little bit about the baths and the sophistication of the baths. So uh, it was an advanced culture, uh, you know, barbaric at times, but becoming more and more civilized and uh, cleanliness was important, becoming more and more important. So the baths, uh, this is actually in England, in Bath, England, still existing. I can take a look at the engineering here and how it works, uh, details of research and discussion and other courses. A little more details of how that works. Picture. Now this is 1800 years ago. Uh, the baths are becoming more sophisticated, uh, more complex architectural designs. Uh, certainly a topic of uh, research and uh, more lecture later on. Another picture of the baths of Caracalla by Emperor Caracalla. picture of the present ruins and then a simulation do come back and take a look at this students uh, run the simulation and do drill down into the different things here architectural studies minor town college uh, Pantheon Institute in Rome helps help us put that together uh, we have a couple individualized majors one graduated now in graduate school in architecture um, at this town college. And so, and here's links to the Pantheon Institute and also University of Trento where I taught a PhD course. And then a link to uh, a lot of other pictures and travels from six trips in Italy and uh, my personal language dictionaries for mostly Italian, but um, a couple other languages too.